Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode 3 in our series with the Hunters, the World War II U-boat simulation game where you get to command a German U-boat starting in 1939. We've survived our first two patrols. We've sunk three ships. We've deployed some mines in the Atlantic. Now it's February 1940 and it's time for us once again to depart the friendly shores of Germany and head out into the wilds of Atlantic. Let's get started on patrol number three. So let's do a quick summary of our U-86 on its first two patrols so far. We've had, again, two patrols. We've got three ships sunk, 13,600 tons uh, put to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. One quick word on that, that at the defeat level, the victory level is determined by how many, determined by how many tons you sink, and the defeat level is 50,000 tons or less. So we're still only one quarter of the way to avoiding defeat and getting to the draw level. So we have a lot of work to do. And our last patrol, although we had a successful mission by deploying the mines and sinking one ship, the ship we sunk was only 2,600 tons. So not a productive patrol really in terms of accumulating tonnage for our victory conditions. Now this will be our third patrol. And if this patrol is successful, we will see one of our crew members, one of our officers, or our crew levels increase at the end of this level. So this is kind of a big patrol for us. Success here would go a long way towards helping us get some advancements, because each one of those crew or officer advancements gives us certain benefits to die rolls. And I think getting those di dice rolls working in our favor is going to help give us better chances of survival. So with that being said, it's time for us to determine our patrol area and get U-86 back out in the ocean. So it's February 1940 and U-86 sits in its U-boat pen in Germany. The first thing we do is we get, because of our rank, we get to see if we can choose our patrol destination. We're looking for a one on a die roll, a two, no. So we do not get to choose our destination. Instead, we have to roll two six-sided dice to see where our patrol area is. I'm hoping we can avoid a mine laying mission because those don't seem to really give us opportunities for a ton of tonnage. I mean, they're replacing our, our torpedoes with mines. So let's hopefully we get something other than mine laying. Gah, nine, another mine laying mission. Okay, we'll get to it though. We accept our duty and let's get started. So here is a U-86 refitted with mines. We've replaced all our uh, steam torpedoes in the four torpedo tubes with mines and we're going to actually move those steam torpedoes back into the reserve and get rid of all of our electric torpedoes here now we could still have a very successful hunting mission i shouldn't sound so discouraged perhaps because i mean you know we're going to have three zones to explore after we lay our mines assuming things go that well that far so we potentially could have some pretty good hunting here so let's not get discouraged and be all grumpy faces here just because they're giving us mines to deploy again so all right Time though, let's get out into the waters and get this going. All right, so U-86 leaves the U-boat pens in Germany. We're out into our first ch transit zone in the English Channel here. In order to successfully pass this, we need a four or greater. Hopefully we make it through. Whew, <laughs> that was close. A five. Let's move from right there so nothing, nothing happens there. Let's move into our second transit zone. We are almost at our mine laying, des mine laying destination. Again, we're gonna roll for an encounter. An eight, no worries there. Another successful pass. Now we come up into the British Isles off the coast of Ireland here, and this will be where we lay our mines. So in order to successfully lay our mines, we need to roll a five or greater on the special missions chart. And uh, there are no modifiers for these, so it's just a straight up roll. So here we go, hoping for a big number. Six. Whew. Another close one. We've made it. So let us get the mines out into the water and rearm our ship. So we are going to deploy our mines into the frosty February waters off the coast of Ireland here. So our mines are gone out there and now we can reload our torpedo tubes with our steam torpedoes. We bring four into the for forward torpedo tubes and one into the aft torpedo tubes and we are ready to go hunting in the remaining of our tour. All right, so U-86 moves northeast off the coast of Ireland, and we will start hunting for Allied shipping. Now, one good thing about this is that because we've successfully deployed our mines, it's a successful mission. That means we're going to have a crew advancement, assuming we get back to port. And we've still got a long ways to go to get through this, but let's see if we can encounter some shipping. We're hoping for a five or an eight here. Nine. Nothing. 
Okay, so we will continue on to the next zone. We will try again. This is fairly reminiscent of our last <laughs> our, our last patrol. We hit uh, allied shipping on the third zone here. Let's hope we can get something now. Five or an eight, please. Four. Four is nothing again. So once again, we are armed with torpedoes heading into the last zone, and we need a favorable roll here to encounter some shipping. A five. Aha! Score! A ship. An unescorted ship to boot. So something that could be easy hunting here. Let's get this set up. All right, so the first thing, let's roll for day or night. A five to a four, five, or six, and it's nighttime. Six. Excellent. So we have a nighttime attack here. Now we need to roll for the ship size. On a one to three, it's a small freighter. Four or five, large freighter, freighter, and a six is a tanker. Let's get a nice big fat tanker here. Five, large freighter. We'll take that. Now we have to roll to see what the name of the ship is. So we're going to roll on the two ten-sided dice to get a double digit. So our large freighter, let's see what we've got. A 70. The large freighter is the 7,000 ton Empire Howard. Most excellent. So let's set this up. Now as a large freighter, this one is less than 10,000 tons, so it's got three hit points. We are coming in at night. Now because, excuse me, because there's no escorts, we are just gonna come right up to close range and we're gonna be on the surface and we get to, with this unescorted target, I mean, these are kind of sitting docks, right? So we get to unleash everything, deck guns, forward torpedo tubes and aft torpedo tubes in sequence as much as we need to try to sink it. And if we don't sink it, then we can try to go to an additional round of combat. But if that happens, we would have to chance being detected. So let's determine our attack here and then set this up. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use up two rounds of our uh, deck gun ammo. So we might as well just fire that off and see what we can damage we can do initially. Now at close range, there's no dice roll modifiers to this. So we have eight or less for our two shots. There we go. We get a six. So the first one pounds the side of the, the, the Empire Howard, right? Second shot fires. Nine. Ah, we missed with the second shot. Okay, so let's see how much damage we've done with this hit. So for this one, we don't have to roll for duds because it's just regular damage fire. So here we are at the deck gun, hoping for a one. Four. One damage on the large freighter. So, with one damage on the large freighter, now we'll have to determine our next steps. And I think it's kind of obvious what we'll do. We're gonna fire and launch all four torpedoes from the four torpedo tubes, since the forward torpedo tubes, since we really don't have to save them for anything. I mean, we're not gonna run into any more ships because we're in the last zone. So let us let loose with all four of these torpedoes here. Now, for this one here, we are a night a surface torpedo, an unescorted surface torpedo. So we are gonna get a minus one to the modifier. Other than that, nothing. And we're firing at close range. So instead of an eight or less, we need a nine or less firing four torpedoes. Fire one. Seven is a hit. Fire two. Six is a hit. Fire three. Eight is a hit. Fire four. Four is a hit. Excellent work. I think that's our first watch officer that manages those, right? So that's outstanding work by first officer McCloyd. Very good work. Now we have to see which ones are duds or not. Let's do two at a time. On a one or a two, the hits are duds. Hoping for big numbers here then. Four and a one, so we get one dud. Next two shots, a two and a four. So out of our four torpedoes that hit, we get two that are duds, so we can take them out of the equation. Excuse me. But things are looking pretty good because a hit, a torpedo that hits and isn't a dud does at least one damage. So now we're gonna roll on total damage, but the large fre freighter here, the Empire Howard, has no chance. Let's see the explosions and enjoy the fun. Five and a two. A two does three damage and a five does one damage. That's a total of four damage. It only needs two. So the Empire Howard, a 7,000 ton large freighter, goes crumbling to the bottom of the ocean. And U-86 now has its fourth kill, the first time it's taken down a large freighter. Congratulations, boys. Good work. Let us see if we can get U-86 back home safely now. We have two transit zones to pass through. We need to see if we get encountered with an aircraft here, holding, hoping for big numbers. Eight on our first one, most excellent. 
We'll head into our second transit zone, the last thing we need before we are safely home. Passing through the safe waters to the east, the, the waters to the east of Scotland. Ooh, four. <laughs> that was close. A three or less, and we would have had an encounter. So, U boat 86 in, a, in an oddly mission, in a mission uh, patrol, oddly reminiscent of, her, reminiscent of her previous one. I mean, we had mines on the previous one. We encountered a ship in the last zone, and we sank it. Uh, this, however, was even less eventful because we didn't encounter any uh, ships, uh, any aircraft as we were trying to lay our mines, and the ship we targeted was unescorted. So this was kind of a, a can of corn mission for us here. This was pretty straightforward. Let's uh, tally up our results, and let's uh, make some crew advancements and get ready for our next patrol. All right, so we pull back into the pen. I'm just going to kind of uh, refit our ship here as we talk about the results here. So this makes the completion of our third patrol, and all three patrols so far have been successful. I mean, to be fair, those mine-laying patrols, the mine-deploying patrols, seem like they're pretty straightforward, right? We have that dice roll, and if we succeed at it, the mission is successful. So it's, it's kind of a, a play-the-odds there type of thing. But three successful missions and three attempts is nothing to complain about. So far, the, the U-boat gods have been shining on us, and we'll take it. That means we're going to have crew advancements once we get the... the ship refitted here. In terms of ships sunk, we sunk our first large freighter, freighter, so we have two small freighters put to the bottom of the ocean, a large freighter and one tanker. The 7,000 additional tons adds on to our 13,600 tons from previous patrols, giving us 20,600 tons. So we're slowly but surely making progress, although it would be really nice to get a, a, a patrol where we could kind of take down like three or more ships, maybe hitting a convoy or something like that, or we're getting a couple of encounters, two or three encounters along the way. So I'm hoping for a bigger patrol. Those, the mines do but hurt, right, in terms of tonnage for sure, because you take up one-fourth of your chances to get uh, combat results and you lay mines. Although, you know, again, nothing to smile at with that whole automatic success once we lay the mines down. So with that being said, uh, U-86 is refitted in the month of March 1940. Uh, we will be ready to patrol in April 1940, and as the game goes on, we can already see, now that it's not 1939, for example, we don't get the benefit of that di dice roll modifier when we encounter aircraft uh, and we have to do a crash dive. The dice roll modification numbers, as you go further forward in the years and in the game, start to work against us. And that's why I think it's really important that our crew advances in skills, but you've got kind of these two competing factors where you get to be a better trained and more adept crew but at the same time, the allies are getting better at this too, and so things are just gonna get harder. So uh, with that being said, let's uh, make our promotions and advancements here, and let's get ourselves set up so we can start our port fourth patrol. All right, so let's talk about the good things that happen. Now, as the commander of the U-boat, we have to accumulate 100,000 tons or sink a capital ship and things like that in order to get some promotion levels. So that's gonna take a while for us, and, and or a year of service too. But we don't have that yet, although we're, we're starting to get close to that. I mean, September and we're going to next tour will be in April or so. So we're slowly inching our way towards possibly getting a promotion as the commander of the U-boat. Uh, the other thing that can happen here, though, is our crew can get advancements. And that's what we're going to roll for now. Because we've had three successful missions, we roll a six-sided die. On a one to four, one of our officers gets promoted. Uh, gets an advancement in skill on a five or a six, our crew does. So let's see how this lucky dice roll ends up. A four. For a four, our second watch officer, that is watch officer Ray, gets develops into an expert watch officer. So we have given him his advancement counter in skill. And what that means for the boat, it's actually not significantly a benefit to have our second watch offer. It would be honestly, it'd be better to have our doctor or our engineer in particular, because if our engineer were to have advanced, oops, second watch officer is here. If the engineer were to advance, we would get bonus on bonus dice rolls on repairing things in the ship, which would have been really helpful. A doctor would help us preserve, kind of prevent serious wounds from deteriorating on crew and stuff like that. Uh, but for the first watch officer and the second watch officer, if they end up taking over the boat, over the U-boat because of uh, injury or death to the commander or the first watch officer, there's no penalties to their taking over. So that's not the best one to have advanced, but we'll take it. No complaints here. And with that, I think that takes us here to the end of our second patrol. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've overlooked, but our ship is refitted. The U-86 is refitted. We'll be back in action. So this was February, our refit was March, in April of 1940. And starting in July, we'll be shifting our base down to France. 
to the Bay of Biscay, but right now we're still be operating out of Germany. We'll be back for a springtime patrol, our fourth patrol, and hoping our run of good luck here continues. We've got 20,000 tons. We've got to start piling up some tonnage here, but we'll get to it in April. Thank you again for tuning in and watching. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please consider subscribing, and we'll see you again for patrol number four. Take care, everybody.